The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Oakland has come to an end this morning. More than two and a half hours ago, hundreds of police moved into two protester camps and began making arrests. Let's begin with ABC 7's Amy Hollifield live at Frank Ogawa Plaza where it all began. Amy? Kristen, police are now surrounding the plaza. There are no more protesters here. There are a lot of officers. They've just finished putting up barricades around the plaza, so they officially have made a statement here. They have taken over it. They have secured it, and now they're going to start cleaning it out. Police got here at about 4.30 this morning. First, they made an announcement that they had declared this an unlawful assembly. Everyone needed to clear out or they would start making arrests. Some protesters chose to stay, and they had told us that they felt like this cause was worth being arrested and going to jail for, and that they would link arms and that they would stay here, and police were going to have to carry them out. We saw a lot of them walk out on their own. They were handcuffs, but they had to walk out. Some did resist and had to be carried out. We did see an incident of tear gas. We don't know who released it. Police say they did not. And we did see an officer who was overcome by it and uh, had to rip off his helmet. He couldn't breathe. He was grasp gasping for air, rubbing his eyes. And they said the protesters unleashed it on them. The protesters tell us why would they do that when they weren't wearing masks and how would they get it and it's very expensive and hard to find. So some conflicting uh, accounts of who set off the tear gas. That was at the very beginning of the arrest. We didn't see anything beyond that that uh, looked like any kind of police brutality. Some protesters have claimed that police roughed them up. Uh, we did not see that. We were here at 14th and Broadway. Uh, police have now uh, moved on. The, the, the march has moved on to other parts of the city. So the officers who are still here have secured the plaza. They plan to clear it out. They say people are allowed to protest and exercise their freedom of speech between the hours of uh, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., but the, no camping will be allowed. Because of all of this police activity, they have shut down a lot of the streets here in downtown Oakland, and they have advised people who work here to delay the start of their day. Uh, don't come down here immediately. Maybe stay home until further notice. It's not, um, it's not a, a demand. It's an advisement that they say you might want to consider staying home uh, for at least the beginning of the morning. Terry McSweeney is covering this story a few blocks from me. He is at a snow park where the protesters uh, moved to at one point, and police also went over there to clear it out. So, Terry, what's the situation over there? Well, you're talking about streets being closed. I'm standing on 19th Street, and as you look out towards Alice, we're between Alice and uh, Harrison, you can see the number of police in riot gear still on the scene out here. Uh, there are just a few people, uh, protesters, I guess you could call them, on bikes, uh, looking at the police, uh, occasionally having a conversation with them, but there's no confrontation going on there right now that we can see. And as you look down 19th Street, uh, in the other direction towards Harrison, on the far side, on the corner there, you can still see a large police presence there as well. An overwhelming police presence, considering what happened out here at Snow Park earlier tonight. Take a look at some video of the arrests. Now, you're going to see a whole lot of uh, activity uh, of people being carried away. And uh, keep in mind, this is pretty much all the arrests that took place out here. Uh, there were four arrests, two men and a woman, and uh, they they stood up and went peacefully. Uh, the woman was uh, was yelling at the police officer, but she was not physically resisting. A fourth person lay down, wouldn't get up, so police had to pick him up. Uh, you know, each had an arm and a leg, and they, they carried him out to the, uh, uh, the wagon to be taken away to jail. Now, if we come back out here live, you're going to see some activity. And this is what's left of the encampment here, the Occupy Oakland at Snow Park. I just went out and counted 15 tents. They're still here. There are some sleeping bags. There are some bicycles. There are some... It's, it's basically a campsite. That's, that's what it was, and that's what, you'd, that's what you'd expect to see here. That's what you see. Uh, there were only five, uh, four or five people here, maybe six, and four were arrested, and the other two got up and walked away on their own accord. So city workers out here, I'm told, about to clean this all up. Snow Park will be reopened uh, to the public, and that includes any protesters later this morning. Live in Oakland, Terry McSweeney, ABC 7 News.
defending the level. Now, if it's something were to happen, you can it's criticize scared a lot them. Of people when you make an announcement. Well, or... we live in a democracy. Right. Do you want information or don't you? And... Imagine. Here was a young girl who was just becoming aware of our democracy. When Benjamin Franklin exited the Constitutional Convention, he was asked by a woman, Sir, what have you given us? His immediate response was, A republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. Yet most Americans today have been persuaded that our nation's governmental system is a democracy and not a republic. A little smiley face, and here it is again. Special for you, special count for you people that don't believe or do believe but don't understand and say well it's not important well it is important folks imagine here was a young girl who was just becoming aware of our democracy when Benjamin Franklin exited the Constitutional Convention he was asked by a woman sir what have you given us? His immediate response was, A republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. Yet most Americans today have been persuaded that our nation's governmental system is a democracy and not a republic. I want to live up to her expectations. I want our democracy to be as good as Christina imagined it. The difference between these two is essential in understanding Americanism and the American system. Before we discuss political systems, however, it's helpful to address the confusion that has been spread about the political spectrum. Many have been led to believe that the political spectrum places groups such as communists on the far left, fascists or dictators on the far right, and political moderates or centrists in the middle. However, a more accurate political spectrum will show government having zero power on the far right to having 100% power on the far left. At the extreme right, there is no government. The extreme left features total government under such labels as communism, socialism, Nazism, fascism, princes, potentates, dictators, kings, any form of total government. Those who claim that Nazis and fascists are right-wing never define their terms. This amounts to spreading confusion. Toward the middle of the political spectrum can be found the type of government limited to its proper role of protecting the rights of the people. That's where the Constitution of the United States is. Those who advocate such a form of government are really constitutional moderates.